Hey everybody, Steve at the Graphite Lab here. Hope y'all are doing all right. Today we're kicking off a two-part video series on adjustable capacity planning, or as you'll hear it called often, ACP. ACP in a nutshell, right, is just a way for your CSRs to get a bird's eye view of what technicians are available for any given job type as they're trying to book it without needing to reference a dispatch board, without needing to ask around and take a second to see who's there. It's also going to open up much more dynamic scheduling on your online booking systems, whether that be through Google local service ads, whether that be through your own web booking, through schedule engine, whatever avenue you're going. And last but not least, this also gives you a way, my personal favorite thing about ACP, gives you a way to artificially forecast certain days that you anticipate being big, big, big money and making sure those days stay available for your team. So when those big calls come, you're free to take them. Um, the reason this is a two-part series, if we were to just do this in one video, it's an awfully long one. And there is a fair amount of um, setup that goes in before you can even begin capacity planning. I wanna take this video to do the setup. And then in the second video, we'll get into manipulating it and see the benefits that it can really bring you. Now, the amount of setup here and kind of the table stakes for uh, for capacity planning, luckily, are all on board within Service Titan. You should have access to them in your account right now. Um, in the event that you're looking for them and you're not seeing the, uh, we'll talk about technician shifts, arrival windows. We'll talk about it's a couple different areas. If you're not seeing those, please just reach out to your CSM. Say hey. Why am I not seeing technician shifts on here? Can you flip a switch in the back end and they can configure account accordingly? Um, however, most of these, if not all of these at this point should be on by default for you. Um, so with that, let's, uh, let's dive in. First things first, with capacity planning, you're going to want to set up technician shifts. If this is something that you don't already have in place, it's an invaluable tool. Um, what we'll do here, is go over to our schedule tab. You should see calendar technician shifts and we'll get to in a bit is capacity planning. Now, if you're familiar, if you've ever worked in um, a place where you've had to put together shifts for technicians and just put down an hourly schedule, what we're gonna get into here shouldn't be too foreign of a concept. Um, this is a, a pretty robust way to set hours for your technicians. A nice side benefit to this, besides just what we're doing with the uh, the capacity board here, is gonna be on your dispatch board. Gone are the days if somebody's out sick that you need to use non-job events. This will automatically, reflective of whatever shifts you put in, show on your board, hey, this technician is not available to work at this point without the need for non-job events. So a, a very nice side effect to uh, building these shifts out for capacity planning. What I'm gonna do here though, I'm just gonna create a very broad blanket shift for all my technicians, we'll say eight to five, all right? I'm gonna create a shift, right? As long as I have shift selected here, there is time off, we'll get to that in a second, but you wanna make sure we're set for shift. I'm not making an overnight, I'm not making this on call, this is just my day to day, right? So default, shift right start date starting today going up until eh, why why stop right end date go ahead add all technicians i'm gonna hit add to schedule and now we play the waiting games you'll see here we have our shifts populated in eight to five default shifts if i look over here at the following week I've got eight to five for everybody. I hammered it every day, right? So I'm gonna have everyone on every day. If you wanted to narrow this down and just do it by business units, right? See, what do I have uh, shift wise here? Now, let's say that um, I am taking Bob off for Sunday, right? I can just delete this shift here. And let's say Bob has time off, right? And go here, say we are on vacation. That date being the second, Put it right here from eight to five timesheet code of go for me, repeat never, technician, it's just for Bob. Add this to my schedule and now Bob is gonna be on vacation. Cool thing here, just so I can show you before we keep going on here, let's navigate over to Sunday the second. 
And we'll notice here, while everyone else is bookable, Bob's on vacation. It's one nice thing. If you don't already have these, you may not be familiar. This is a very, very easy way to make sure that your timesheet codes for PTO are put in. You don't have to worry about non-job events being checked in or out of. All right, back to the show. Now we have our text shifts in place. What we're gonna do now is move over into our settings menu. And now that we have these technician shifts in place, you wanna go into your technicians and just make sure everybody is assigned a business unit. Adjustable capacity planning is very reliant on business units as we'll see as we continue. If a technician is not accounted for in a business unit, they are not going to show on your available capacity board. Capacity board is gonna say, all right, how many total hours do we have available in this time slot based on how many technicians with said business unit that I'm looking at are on shift? That's why the shifts build up a base capacity for us. So at that point, we need to make sure every technician that we want showing on that board has a business unit applied. I'd recommend if you haven't done this before, just go in, even if everybody is the same business unit, go on in, edit your technician, set a business unit for them, and that way they're accounted for in your capacity planning. The next thing that we're gonna be doing in here is you'll wanna go to your arrival windows. And I strongly recommend if you haven't already done this, this should be like an out of the box thing you do in Service Titan. Most of you watching this will probably go here and see arrival windows already in place. These just things you can tell a customer instead of saying, oh yeah, we will be there at nine o'clock sharp. And then at 10 after nine, suddenly you have a, an upset customer on your hands. This way you can give them a little bit of a buffer time, right? A lot of folks do this by two hour windows, three hour windows. Sometimes if you really, um, if you really want to spread it out, you can go by like four hour windows or more. Either way, I recommend like an easy rule of thumb, two hours, but it is of course very dependent on your business. Once I've got these, save the configuration and we're good, right? Next thing we want to do is we want to go into our job types. Now let me move my noggin over here. I want to go into our job types and these are uh, very important is the durations. Job type duration, if you don't already have them, set them up all of them, right? You, you want to make sure every job type has a ballpark duration. This doesn't need to be set in stone, but it's just like an average of, all right, if I have a clog drain, talking about hour and a half to two hours of work, be conservative with your estimate. Two hours is how long this job will go. The reason this is important, whenever we have our capacity planning in place, right? And it says we've got 10 total hours of plumbing service available for customers to book, right? If you book one job, let's say you have 10 total hours, this two hours here is what's gonna tell the system, shave that 10 and make it eight. We now only have eight more hours. If you have no duration set up in your job types, People will go on and just book and book and book. Nothing is subtracting from your available capacity, right? So you need to have these in place as well. So, so far, right? You wanna set up business units for your technicians. You wanna set up technician shifts. You wanna set up job type durations. We're not quite done yet. <laughs> the, uh, the next area that we are going to go to here is the capacity settings. So, now that we've got our preliminary settings in play, we can go through and actually adjust how our capacity planning is gonna operate. What you wanna do in settings, right? We're just gonna search capacity. Once you get there, capacity planning should have its own little sub menu. First thing we'll do is set up some business unit groups. Now, on mine, I've got it very, very bare bones where every single one of my business units is going to show its own capacity hours, right? What this, what this in a sense will do for you, if you'd like, you can bundle these together, right? Where I can say electrical um, maintenance and service. Maybe I have the same electricians that I just, hey, if, if we don't have any service calls, get out there and do some, some maintenance visits. And you're, you sort of have uh, text that will, you know, dual wield in these, uh, in, in these job types or in these business units, I should say. By all means, you can group them together, right? So that this way I could, instead of having electrical maintenance, I could say electrical maintenance and service. 
And instead of saying on my capacity board, because the way this is going to appear now, right, is in current standard, when I look at my capacity planning board, all my custom arrival windows per business unit will show up with however many technicians I have on that, uh, that have shifts within a certain day, right? So if I wanted to, though, I could just for sake of showing you an example, say maintenance and service are going in here, right? And then save it. We'd, we would now be bundling that. So instead of when I'm looking at a capacity board showing me, oh, you have of your electrical maintenance technicians that are under that business unit, five of them are set up for nine hour shifts on this day. That would give you nine, nine hours times five technicians, 45 would be your base capacity, right? That we can now book from. That's our number that we're going to pull from as we're uh, booking jobs. If I wanted to set an even higher base capacity, right? Like, let's say I'm looking at this. I'm like, yeah, I mean, these are big ticket jobs though. Um, I would prefer to have like, I know it says 45 hours. If someone calls me and really needs this done, I'll, I'll go out there and do it myself if I have to. Like that's, I'm not going to miss out on those extra jobs just because we're at capacity. Feel free. You can cushion yourself a little bit with some extra budget. You can artificially tell the system, all right, I know the shifts may say that we only have X amount of X of uh, capacity for this day, but if, if push came to shove, I'd be willing to do four extra hours of work. So I'll make that a four and I'll stack on top of whoever else I have in there, right? I'm going to cancel this. I don't want to save it for quite yet, but just to go back here and show you on our board, as you can see, each business unit has its own breakdown based on our arrival windows that we set, right? And you'll see seven of seven because I only have one technician for a seven hour shift on electrical install. I have for electrical service, 14 total, because I have two technicians within electrical, within electrical service. If I have, and you see what I'm talking about, right? Where any of these business units, whatever the technician shifts are within that time is what's going to populate my available hours. Now you'll notice right now it's, it's, it's tough to fiddle with. We can't really finagle it yet. We haven't finished our setup. Just wanted to give you a glimpse on where this thing's targeting how these have uh how these settings have kind of worked together thus far so continuing on with the show right once next on capacity we want to go to configuration now, this is going to set a lot of the rules for this board right on how we can fiddle with it how we can actually make this thing magic so configuration capacity view options this is why i emphasized custom arrival windows i strongly recommend that you stick with these um if you were to say, you know, I'm using two hour windows, I could just say, yeah, give me two hour windows instead. But the standard is custom arrival. And I do recommend you don't really budge from that. Next, we've got capacity enhancement, manual adjustment. I would just recommend leaving it there. You could have skills work into your capacity planning as well. That's another video for another day. We're not going to address that right now. Your availability threshold. Now, this is, think of this as like your cushion between jobs. I may have, let's call it eight hour shift, right? But does that necessarily mean that customers can book eight jobs for one hour a piece off of there? Not really. It leaves no time to get in between these jobs. Think of this as a cushion that you think just as a rule of thumb, right? It doesn't have to be very specific, but ballpark. How long will it take my technician on average to get from job A to job B? How much cushion do we want to leave in between these, uh, these jobs on my capacity board? What this will do is pull from your uh, existing hours. So if I have eight and I say I need an availability threshold of 30 minutes between my jobs, I'll essentially take that and do the math for us to say, all right, we need to pull 30 minutes between each of these jobs, which when you account for like shrinking 30 minutes out of an eight hour day in between each one comes out relatively to be about six hours that you have free, right? Of any technician can be booked for six hours worth of work because of this threshold. If you have nothing in this availability threshold, at that point, you can almost guarantee that unless your technicians are working at a breakneck pace, there's no traffic and nothing ever goes wrong. They're going to be late to anything beyond their first or second appointment of that day. So 
I strongly recommend the, the usual average, you could say 30 minutes for most places. You know your market, right? If, if you're working out of like Los Angeles, you may have a bigger availability threshold than somebody working out of Moody, Alabama, right? Just totally different ways traffic patterns move. So be cognizant of this, just ballpark it though, right? You don't have to be super, super specific. It doesn't need to be down to a minute. You just wanna set a general rule of thumb. Um, now, this send adjustable capacity to all scheduling services. It's a big reason we're doing this, right? This way, as I'm looking at Google local service ads, right? If I'm a customer, I'm Googling you, I'm going to book through there. I'm going to see the capacity available based on what's set up in your planning. It's not just saying, hey, yeah, book away. Here's our arrival windows. It's going to restrict what I can book based on what's actually available to me. So you will wanna also set up real-time availability. I'm gonna save this here. And at this point, your capacity board should be ready to go. I'm gonna navigate back over here. We'll see what we're working with, right? We still have our sevens. We still have all this stuff here. All right. That sets up a capacity board that is in usable condition today. We're not going to go through yet and start um, tinkering with this board and adding and subtracting different hours in here. That's for a uh, for part two of this video. But now I want to show you what this looks like from a call booking perspective. So as a CSR, right, I'm over here. I've got my basic information for this job. I'm doing clog drain, plumbing service. I've got business units, all that set. Say that I want to do it on the third. Like, hey, when can you come out on Monday the third? I'll hit get availability, right? And whenever this pulls up, I will now be taken to a screen that will show me what percent are we actually booked for. Now, again, being a dummy account, everything's wide open, right? I don't actually have jobs going. But as these start to book, you'll start seeing here like 0% full. That'll become slowly 15% full, 30% full, 85% full. And then whenever it's fully booked up, it just brings you up a block here. Whenever a job within that business unit is just not possible at these times. So at the end of the day, we take this one, hit select a window, and that is capacity planning as it functions. Now in part two, we're going to get into actually maneuvering the capacity board. So until, uh, until we meet again in part two, Thank you so much for watching and um, yeah, I'll see you next time.